Welcome in everyone, this is Sean with MTG808 Junior, your home for standard popper content on the interweb and Hawaii's home for grassroots youth Magic the Gathering tournaments. Um, thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be taking a look at our blue-red Artificer deck. Um, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that we've been sharing many different drafts of this particular archetype. Um, but today we're going to be taking a look at some new additions that M19 brought us. Uh, it's yeah, just one big addition. Um, before we jump into that, though, just want to make sure everyone is aware of our upcoming tournament schedule. Um, this Sunday, we have a youth standard popper tournament over at DePlanet. Um, they are moving locations soon, but the, this tournament is going to still be at their current location on King Street. Um, so hope to see you there. Um, and then... In, later in July, on the 29th, which is also a Sunday, we'll be over at Westside Comics for some more standard popper. And then, uh, once again, on August 19th, over at Westside, um, we've got another standard popper tournament. Um, I am trying to plan out these tournaments a little more in advance um, once the school year starts for me. Uh, I'm going to be starting my first ever full-time teaching job um, in August, so once the school year starts for me, I'm going to be a little more overwhelmed, um, so trying to get these tournaments on the schedule now, um, at least up until December. Uh, again, in December, we're going to be having another scholarship tournament, um, so be ready for that, and these standard popper tournaments... Uh, that we're running hopefully two every month um, are going to be a great kind of ramp up to that. So keep your eyes peeled and keep track of the standard popper metagame. So um, here we have M19 blue red artifacts or excuse me blue red artificers and uh, not much has changed since um, the last version of this deck that we did a deck tech on, but uh, I'm going to just go over the general philosophy of the deck if you're unfamiliar with it, and then, uh, well, I guess we'll start with the first big change here. Gearsmith Prodigy from M19, one blue mana for a 1-2 human artificer. Gearsmith Prodigy, Prodigy gets plus one plus zero as long as you control an artifact. So, um, this, if you have an artifact in play, this is a one mana 2-2. Two -two which is a really good rate for an aggro deck, and especially for an aggro deck that already wants to play a ton of artifacts. So, uh, not only is it great in the curve, but it is also a relevant creature type. Artificer combos with Inventor's Goggles, right? One, one colorless mana for an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus two. Whenever an artifact Artificer enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Inventor's Goggles to it. Um, so that means Inventor's Goggles has to be in play, and then you play the Artificer after that, and you get the free equip. Otherwise, it just costs two to equip. So, you know, it's a it's a small bonus, but uh, in a format like this where, um, you know, there's going to be lots of combat interactions, um, there's going to be lots of trading in combat, there's going to be lots of spot removal used on creatures, giving your creatures that extra toughness boost, you know, getting them out of shock range or fungal infection range or uh, moment of craving range is going to be um, very, very valuable. So Inventor's Goggles is great. Gearsmith Prodigy is an artificer, which is great with it. The tried and true artificers that we've been seeing in this archetype, Aether Swooper, also an artificer, 1-2 Flyer, uh, can make a servo the first time it attacks. Uh, same thing with Aether Chaser, a 2 on a 2 one first strike can make a servo the first time it attacks. Um, these servos are relevantly artifact creatures, so they turn on Gearsmith Prodigy, they help us cast our stuff with Improvise. Improvise is um, kind of our other big incentive of playing a bunch of artifacts, right? Improvise says your artifacts can help cast the spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one colorless mana. So Metallic Rebuke can cost as little as one blue mana as long as you have two untapped artifacts. Sweatworks Brawler can cost as little as one red mana as long as you have three untapped artifacts. A little harder to get three untapped artifacts, but you know, even just casting this guy for two, a two mana, three, three menace is great. And then, of course, the all-star of the deck, Bastion Inventor, um, could cost as little as one blue for a 4-4 hexproof, as long as you have five other artifacts. Oftentimes, this guy is going to cost around three or four, but even just paying three or four for, uh, you know, hexproof is just such a strong ability. We've seen it do so much work in this format. Um, you know, being able to play this guy at the top of your curve when you are when you already have a bunch of synergy with artifacts, um, that's really the big draw to this deck, Bastion Inventor. And then, relevantly, all of these creatures are artificers as well. 
every creature in this deck is an artificer except for the servos that get made by aether chaser um and aether swooper so inventor's goggles is great relevantly uh you can tap it to pay for improvised costs without needing to um you know it it'll still give the the equip bonus even if it's tapped right so you can tap it to pay for improvised costs and it's basically free right you're not going to tap it for anything else so um it's still going to do all the same stuff that it does even when it's tapped same thing with short sword so short sword here not nearly as uh, much synergy with the deck it is an artifact so it still has synergy with the deck and then just being able to to give your creatures plus one plus one um equipment equipment is kind of tricky uh and i mean that in the sense that if you're playing against a deck with lots of removal um it is very possible that you flood on equipment and run out of creatures to equip stuff too that's kind of the remove the control decks game plan against you is to run you out of creatures leave your equipment there but sometimes um, as long as you just end up with one creature more than they have removal spells to kill, then you're going to have a huge creature as long as you have these equipment spells in play, right? Um, same thing goes for uh, aggro mirrors, right? They're putting out a bunch of little dorks onto the battlefield. You're also playing a bunch of little dorks um, that are comparable in size, but then your little dorks are going to get a slight bonus in combat, which means... You know, even if they die, the next creature is going to get a bonus, so you're you're able to trade up with their creatures um, and eventually win a longer game. So while this is an aggro deck, it does play the long game relatively well because the equipment allows you to continually have a good use for your mana. Um, so that being said, we've got our curve here, Gearsmith Prodigy on 1, Swooper on 2, Aether Chaser on 2, um, nothing on 3. But Sweatworks Brawler is kind of a 3-drop, because if you have any artifact on turn 1, or you get to um, attack with your Aether Chaser, you know, play it on 2, uh, attack on turn 3, you're going to have an artifact in play. So just one artifact turns this guy into a 3-drop, right? So Sweatworks Brawler says it costs 4, usually it, it's going to cost 3, sometimes it might even cost 2 or 1. Um, but, you know, this guy fills out our 3-drop slot, 3-3 three, three Menace. Um, for three is great. Three three minus for two is amazing. Um, and then of course Bastion Inventor here at the top of our curve. Now the problem with this archetype, um, I did try to build this as mono blue. Those of you that have been following the channel for a while know that um, you know I tried to tr make this archetype mono blue. Um, I played it in a couple end boss matches against the kids, and all of their aggro decks just kind of ran over that mono blue deck. Um, it just didn't have the spells needed to kind of race the other aggro decks um and for that that's a big reason why i'm pairing red with blue here because um you know shock and lightning strike just give you that chance to kind of get some tempo in the aggro mirrors to um you know kind of let your long game take over with the equipment um so that's why we're playing red shock and lightning strike are great we have some more spot removal here in the board um for those aggro matchups and then, um, let's see, the last Metallic Rebuke is great against Control. This We're only main decking two because uh, I think Control is going to be a smaller percentage of the metagame, but I think a big appeal of this deck is that, in theory, it has a pretty solid Control matchup, at least better than the other aggro decks do, right? Being able to counter their um, uh, Salvager of Secrets or their Draw 2 spell, right, or, you know, their big Hexproof creature that they want to end the game with, Right, um, being able to counter that is going to be game breaking. Um, if you're applying enough pressure, oftentimes you just need one of these spells to kind of um, throw off their game plan just a little bit, and then you kind of can kind of edge out the victory from there. So we're only main decking two because, um, you know, unless you're expecting a control heavy meta, Metallic Rebuke um, is not the greatest in other matchups. It's fine against aggro decks, but it's not, you know, it's not as good as other cards can be. Um, so we're only main decking two. We've got one more in the board and then a bunch more counter spells in the board as well um, for those control matchups. I do think um, based on just talking to the youth players um, that I've seen in the past couple weeks, uh, sh I've shown them that black red control deck that I built. I just did a video on blue black control. I think that the con the control decks are at a point where they're strong enough that they're going to become a 
larger presence in the metagame than they have been in the past. So I think this deck is an aggro deck that's well positioned or decently positioned against control, and then you're still playing um, the red spells to kind of give you game against the other aggro decks as well. Uh, last two cards in the main deck, almost forgot Renegade map here. Um, last two cards in the main deck, first one is Cartouche of Knowledge. I'm not... At, super certain if this card belongs in the main deck, but it just seems really powerful, right? Um, if, if you need to start going aggro, Cartouche of Knowledge will do that. If you kind of need to play a long game um, and get some card advantage, Cartouche of Knowledge will do that. Um, unfortunately, it's not an artifact, so I'm only including two, but, um, you know, this card just does a little bit of everything, makes me think that it's good enough. Um, Sky Scanner... Let me pull that up real fast. It's a three mana, three colorless mana. Oh, I guess there's no space. Uh, it's a three colorless mana, one one Thopter. Here we go. Three colorless mana, one one Flying Thopter. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. This guy, it's a little low in power level, but um, it does kind of similar things to Cartouche of Knowledge. The big appeal of Cartouche of Knowledge, though, is that it allows you to race, right? Um, sometimes you just strap up your Sweatworks Brawler or your Bastion Inventor and start going to town. Um, if you really want to, you can throw it on a Gearsmith Prodigy on turn two and start flying over. Gearsmith Prodigy will grow as, excuse me, as the game goes on. Um... You do need to be very careful. If you play this and your opponent has open mana, they could use a removal spell on your creature in response, and then they get a two-for-one instead of you getting a two-for-one because you're not going to get to draw your card, and you lose the Cartouche of Knowledge. Um, oh, let me turn down the volume here. All right, uh, so Cartouche of Knowledge, it's kind of a flex spot in the deck. I'm open to other things being in this slot. I, I think it's worth trying out, though, because just putting a bas uh, Cartouche of Knowledge on Bastion Inventor is one of the most powerful things you can do in this format. Uh, the last card in the deck, I wanted to up the artifact count a little bit, right? Um, if you don't have an artifact on turn one, um, you know, turn, it, playing so many improvised cards and not having early artifacts, um, you know, it's a bit of a liability. So Renegade Map here playing three of them. It allows us to play a really low land count. We're only playing 20 lands. Um, but Renegade Map essentially counts as a land, right? Uh, all of our stuff is super cheap, too, so we can kind of get away with a lower mana base. Um, we might even be playing too many lands with uh, with three Renegade Map here. However, um, so Renegade Map, you can play it on turn one, enters the battlefield tapped, and then you can keep it in play um, to pay for improvised costs until you run out of lands to play. Right? You don't want to pop this to get a land unless you don't have any more lands to play because it being an artifact in play gives you value on casting your improvised creatures. So it's, um, it sometimes is a ramp spell right? Um, if you have your improvised cards in your hand. And then other times it's just going to, you're going to play it on turn one, pop it on turn two, play your second land, and play Aether Swooper. Right? Um, so Renegade Map kind of gives us that flexibility. Um, we might be playing too many lands in this deck because of uh, improvise. Right, this deck can operate off of like three lands. Um, even if you if you just have two lands, this deck is can can do decently. Um, it although that's not to say that the deck can't. Uh, make use of more mana, right? Having so many equipment in the deck means that you're always going to have a use for your mana, so it's probably right to, to kind of hedge to a higher mana count. Um, okay, that's all the cards in the main deck. Looking over here to the sideboard, we see another M19 edition, Scholar of Stars. Um, four mana, three, two. Again, it's an Artificer. When it enters a battlefield, if you control an artifact, draw a card. Um, if, if control decks do become part of the meta, I think that this guy is going to be a really great addition, right? Um, it's a little more expensive than the rest of the cards in your deck. Uh, you can't reduce the mana cost with it unfor or for it, unfortunately. However, just paying for getting a body in play that's going to, you know, start attacking your opponent and then drawing a card um, is going to play that kind of long grindy game that the control decks are not expecting you to be able to play a lot better, right? The control decks are planning to just run you out of cards using their spot removal, using their counter spells. Um, if this gets countered, you know, they get their one for one, but if they don't counter it and they have to use a shock on it, then you get your two for one, right? You drew the card and you got rid of their shock. Um, so Scholar of Stars, just kind of here to, to hedge against the control decks. Bastion Inventor, also similarly amazing against control decks. Um, it might just be wrong to have less than four in the main deck, but for curve reasons, I only wanted three in the main deck. Um, it could very well be wrong. I would not 
say that you're wrong for having four in the main deck. Um, I already mentioned Metallic Rebuke. Having the flexibility to counter any spell is good, um, especially with the surprise value of um, Improvise. However, um, you know the the matchups against control the matches against control are going to go long, right? They're they're trying to get to like nine, tw 10, 11, 12 mana. Um, so sometimes Metallic Rebuke is just going to be dead. So we don't want too many. So we're playing a smattering of other counters. Negate here will counter their card advantage spells. Um, it, it can counter their spot removal in a pinch, though I'd rather save it for their card advantage spells like Wander and Death, Hieroglyphic Illumination, Dark Bargain. Um, but Negate is going to be very good at that. And then Essence Scatter, since the control decks, um, you know, they probably play some big finisher. Essence Scatter is going to be good, but I don't want to play too many because, um, you know, they only play a few creatures. Granted, those few creatures are really important, but if, like, they only draw one of their creatures and you draw two Essence Scatters, then you're going to have a dead card in your hand and you're going to be losing on the axis of card advantage that they're trying to win on. So, <coughs> excuse me. Only playing one Essence Scatter, but I think it's good. Spell Pierce, just for some surprise value, um, it might not be worth playing because, again, the games are going long, but you're trying to use your mana so efficiently in the early game. Um, if you draw it in the early game and you get like a, an opportunity to use it, it's often very backbreaking. So uh, I, I just have one Spell Pierce in here for surprise value. Would not think If you wanted to play the fourth Metallic Rebuke in that spot, I don't think you'd be wrong. Um, we do also need to worry about the aggro decks, so Dual Shot is here to kind of hedge against the one toughness decks, and then Magma Spray is here just, um, you know, from against those two drop decks. Um, we don't really have any sideboard cards um, for kind of the mid-range decks. Haven't, uh, you know, the, the local meta here, ha we haven't seen too many mid-range decks crop up, um, but if you did want a sideboard card against them, then Unquenchable Thirst... Ice over, water not, those are probably your best bet against those, or just more essence scatters. So, um, you know, this board is kind of heavily skewed to, to try to beat control and then has some tools for aggro, which is going to be the mo next most popular deck, I think. So, you know, feel free to tweak with the list. Please let me know what you think. If you have any requests of content that you want to see made in the future, please let me know. Definitely love taking um, user requests. Um, so that's it for this deck. Just want to make sure that everyone knows about our awesome Patreon. Um, you know, what we do is completely Patreon funded. Um, we are really close to our stretch goal. Uh, once we hit $400 a month, we will be able to um, run two scholarship tournaments a year. We're for sure running the one in December, hoping to run the one in May as well. And then uh, also boom boom if you are not yet a patreon subscriber and just need a little more incentive right um right now if you sign up you get your name on a plaque that's really awesome for people here in the local community but you know if you're not in the local community you will gain access to our monthly expenditure report so you'll see how we're spending your money but uh, hopefully by the end of this month, we are going to have a finalized draft of, uh, this awesome Hawaiian youth themed play mat that we've got in the works. Very talented artist, Alika here, lives here locally. I've worked with him on a couple projects in the past. Um, he does amazing artwork. Um, and I'm really excited to see the final draft of this play mat. So if you want to get your hands on one of those play mats, Becoming a patron subscriber is the easiest way to get it. So uh, if you are a bronze contributor, after three months of successful billing, you will be mailed your playmat. If you are a silver or higher contributor, then you will get your playmat um, after your first billing. So uh, check that out. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Love feedback. Love suggestions of future videos to make. Um, and I'm really looking forward to these this next season of youth tournaments. Um, the kids have been, you know, getting better at the game. They've been getting more invested, putting in more practice, brewing more decks. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So thanks for stopping by. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And I will catch you later. Peace.